Video Game Cadet here with the top 10 most underrated video game consoles of all time. You crazy mother... Kicking off this list, the Atari Jaguar comes in at number 10. Atari was concerned with the consumer's desire for increasingly high-powered gaming systems, so Atari canceled its plans for a 32-bit console and focused solely on the Jaguar. It was touted by Atari as the first 64-bit console, however the console did not run on true 64-bit technology, rather using multiple processors that added up to 64 bits. This gave the Jaguar games totally different experiences, some of which were awesome in-depth 3D worlds and others that looked better suited to the Sega Genesis. Also cringeworthy were the absurdly gigantic controllers, which had number pads like the systems of old, but no analog stick to lend itself to 3D games. The system was also plagued by a poor library of games. With all that being said though, the Jaguar was a powerful and innovative and even 3D capable system for its time and has maintained a cult following and is a favorite for many homebrew games. And for those reasons, the Atari Jaguar secures itself onto this list. Nine. Clocking in at number 9 is the Sega Game Gear. This handheld console was Sega's first attempt into entering the handheld market, something that Nintendo had dominated at the time and continues to do so. Although Game Gear took away the most market share of any of Nintendo's competitors, the Game Gear had too many flaws to grab widespread consumer interest. Firstly, the Game Gear could never amount enough third-party support for game development, and the device is considered to be too poorly designed by most gamers. Sega chose a bulky sideways layout. Plus, the console took six AA batteries compared to Game Boy's four. The console also had capacitor issues and a short battery life. But despite all these issues, the Sega Game Gear's technical specs were amazing at the time, and it had a color display, something that Nintendo did not duplicate for many years. And with a solid game title library, this forgotten hero comes in at number 9. Eight. Unfortunately, Sega is right back on the list with the Sega Saturn system. The first signs of impending disaster happened at the very first E3 in 1995. The then president of Sega made an announcement that the publicly known release date for the system was actually a ruse. In fact, it was shipping that very same day to select stores. Not only was this seriously disheartening to many Sega fans, but retailers were also shocked. And many of those same retailers refused to carry the Sega Saturn system due to Sega's tactics. And what might be worse of all, game developers were even surprised by this early release date. So most of the planned titles for launch were not available for some time. Obviously this was a major blunder for Sega and may have been the beginning of the end for their hardware development. However, the system did go on to have some awesome AAA games and debuted some amazing game characters, like Laura Croft from Tomb Raider. In many ways, it was more powerful than its competitors like the PS1, it was also well known to be a powerhouse for 2D fighter games, with great versions of Street Fighter and many others. Seven. At number 7, the 3DO company is on the list with the self-named 3DO system. This was one of the first 32-bit consoles to hit the market, but according to advertisements it was much more than a gaming console, as they marketed it as an interactive multiplayer. The system was heavily anticipated at first. Time Magazine even named it the 1993 product of the year, and many gamers were itching to get it. That was until the $700 price tag was announced. This stopped most average families from being able to purchase it and limiting the reach of the console. Once launched, the system was criticized for only having one controller port and for its controllers not having enough buttons that modern games needed. Another issue was that the game developers focused too many games on full motion videos which is pretty much like playing semi-interactive movies. All of those things aside though, the 3DO did have cutting edge graphics for 1993. It also incorporated surround sound and had some of the best versions of games that were across platforms at the time, like Need for Speed and Road Rash. They even had a cool cartoon mascot named Gek to compete with Sonic and Mario. Six. 
At number 6, the Atari 7800 Pro System joins the list. The system was originally created in 1984 amid the video game crash of that era. Although Atari had a full stock of the system ready to ship, they decided to shelve the system in storage and focus on the emerging home computer market. Things began to change in 1985 as the Nintendo Entertainment System skyrocketed in popularity, so in 1986 Atari released the 7800 Pro System. However, it was too little, too late. What gamers found was an already outdated system with a game library of mostly rehashed 2600 games. Even the sound chip from the 7800 was the exact same from the 2600 system. The 7800 was behind the NES in graphics, sound quality, and game titles. But the 7800 Pro system did have a lot going for it. It was the first console to introduce backwards compatibility, so the system could play every 2600 game. It is also well known for having some very good arcade ports such as Pac-Man, Centipede, and Asteroids. It's smaller than the previous Atari systems, and the games are relatively cheap to collect for today. Five. At number five, we have a 16-bit console called the TurboGrafx-16. Sadly, this console stood in the shadow of the much more popular gaming systems like the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. There were a very few critical issues on the console. Perhaps the biggest one was that it only had one controller port though it did have a peripheral that allowed gamers to connect to five controllers at once. In some ways, such as graphically and sound quality, it may have been a little inferior compared to its competition, but in Japan it was very popular and sold well, even briefly outselling the Super Famicom. However, it never caught enough momentum in the European and American markets. When NEC made a follow-up system a few years later, it was sold only in Japan thus ending NEC's involvement with the home console market elsewhere. The Turbo Graphics had a solid assortment of games, especially its racing game library. It is also well recognized as a favorite of many collectors and for its unique video game cartridge design. Four. Finally, we have a console from before the video game crash of 1983. Here we had the ColecoVision coming in at number four. With competitors like the Atari 2600, it is very hard for a lesser known console to shine. However, this system was well received due in part to aggressive marketing and its graphics being on par or superior to its competition. This console was well known to have some of the best ports for arcade games in the early 1980s. One of the best aspects of the ColecoVision was that it had an expansion model that allowed its system to play every Atari 2600 game. Can you imagine the response now if Xbox tried to configure its hardware to allow it to play PlayStation games? Probably the biggest downfall of this system was simply timing. It was released in 1982, just before the epic video game market crash of 1983. There simply was not enough people out buying systems and games to make this system a mainstay in American homes. And for mainly that reason, it is one of the top most underrated systems. Three. With the solid rank of number 3, the Neo Geo Pocket Color is definitely an underrated system. This handheld device had a phenomenal display and an incredible 40 hour battery life. Also, its joystick was praised for its uniqueness, accuracy, and that it was well suited for handheld gaming. The Neo Geo Pocket Color had quite an impressive library of games too. It was especially known for its Japanese style 2D fighters. It seemed like SNK's Neo Geo Pocket Color had everything going for it, but they ran into some serious issues. The highly anticipated and fan favorite Pokemon games on the Game Boy were dominating the market and leading gamers to purchasing Nintendo's products. Nintendo's 32 bit handheld system, the Game Boy Advance, was also soon to be released, and that caused even more consumers to pass over the Neo Geo Pocket Color. Lastly, SNK also had repeated communication issues with third-party game developers, which caused many game delays and cancellations. Unfortunately, this system was definitely underrated and was almost forgotten. Two. For so long, Nintendo seemed to not be able to make mistakes. Although the N64 had problems with their competition, the Nintendo GameCube truly showed Nintendo's vulnerability and made gamers at the time question the company's ability 
to deliver the best in gaming. The mini discs that the GameCube ran its games on were not well received. They did not have enough storage capacity necessary for ports of games that did well on the PlayStation 2 and Xbox original. The internal memory in the system was also drastically smaller than its competitors, and the graphics were less desirable. The overall feel of the system was that it was just better for suited for kids than mature gamers. However, the GameCube did have some awesome aspects. Firstly, it was far cheaper than its competitors and had some awesome gaming titles at launch. It continued the stories of many gaming icons like Mario, Zelda, Samus, Kirby, and so many more. Super Smash Bros. Melee was particularly amazing on the system. It also created many great series like Animal Crossing. Even its controllers were considered to be innovative and well-designed. For those reasons and many more, the Nintendo GameCube comes in at number two. One. It's what you've all been waiting to hear, the number one most underrated system of all time. Taking that honor, or maybe it's a dishonor, is the Sega Dreamcast. This system simply got so many things right. The system was Sega's most advanced gaming console ever released, and they did so years before the competition would be able to release similar technology. The company was so forward-thinking with the system that they even included an Ethernet connection on the back of the console for online gaming. And that was a really big deal in 1999 when most American families were hearing You've Got Mail with their dial-up internet. And I cannot say enough about the game library for this system either. There were incredible titles like Soul Calibur, Street Fighter 3, Crazy Taxi, House of the Dead 2, Shinmu, the list goes on and on. They had something for everyone. There are a couple gripes about the controllers, but they were actually pretty decent. What killed this system the most was the insane hype for the PlayStation 2. Most gamers just decided to wait for the PlayStation 2, especially after Sega had made so many gaming blunders for the consoles in the past. Sega attempted at selling the system at a loss, but it was simply was not enough to revive this once gaming giant. Sadly, under all the financial strain, Sega could not maintain the console wars and the Dreamcast was discontinued in 2001, giving this system one of the shortest lifespans of any console, but is still near and dear to many gamers around the world. Video Game Cadet here and thank you so much for checking out my video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to throw me a like and subscribe to the channel if you'd enjoy it. If you know of any consoles that should have been on this list, or if you have an idea for another top 10, make sure to comment down below.